Stanley just to win one million naira if you have the accumulator with the highest odds on Paris Pesa this month. Make sure you register on the website of Ari Aputa, promo code FANSTRIBE. Thank you. Almost a smash and grab, another smash and grab, another thing I can. You'll be one of the people who really celebrate that goal, but in the end, I mean, uh, Brentford at least got what they deserve, at least from the game. Uh, one one draw. I don't get any internal sickness, so I'm very okay. Now my heart be this, now my color be this. But if I by any mistake you hear say Mayu is gone, Randall Ray is gone. The cause of my death, there's no need for autopsy. It's Manchester United. <laughs> when you hear say Dangote broke, one Dangote is broke, Dangote is broke. If you be Dangote good friend, his best friend, and you hear say Dangote is broke. You shouldn't wait until you hear him trying to borrow a vehicle from you. He must not get to that level for you to know that Rangota is broke. United is fuckingly broke. What played out today is a typical Manchester United. Soak the pressure. Play what you can play. Hit your opponent on counter. Get a winning goal. Game over. Simple. So when you see me celebrating that goal okay. as a Manchester United fan for over years, at least two decades, there is a reason behind my celebration. Because on a very good day under number circumstances, when we get that goal, that undeserved goal, we win. Yeah. But that is how the mighty has fallen. We got that goal. Some people we are celebrating the goal will concede. And the reason why we considered was very simple. 21 different center backs in 29 Premier League games. What different center back pairing? Pairing, yes. In, in, in 29 Premier League games. 181 shots faced from January 1st. Nine first half corner. Nine first half corner faced against Brentford. In 45 minutes. That is Manchester United now. We are so rubbish. We are crap. We are so useless. This is one game I can tell the whole world. We don't deserve the one point we even have. This is one game we should lose. And I will come out here and say congratulations to Brentford. But I don't blame them. They were wasteful. Because funny enough in football, four shots that he hit the bar are not even shot on target. So you play Manchester United, Brentford played us, we faced 30 shots. They were not on target. But we have faced many shots in a single game this season that we have faced in over 30 years. That is how bad we are. We are so open that the heart cannot see that our midfield and our defense is like from Nigeria to Canada. That when we play Mino and McTominay, our four-man back line need to see Hoyland from Twitter. They can only communicate to him through Twitter, not on the pitch. When I saw Mino playing the midfield with McTominay, I said, he's gone. This game is supposed to end first half. You have a Hoyland as a striker. Then you have a McTominay who's supposed to help Mino. But immediately you pass the ball, he runs to Hoyland and then expose a boy of 18 years. You played game for England. You won man of the match. Today you were a shadow of yourself because of the team setup. Because when you play alongside the Clarice, it's not like playing with a, alongside a mediocre like McTominay. Because it's one player in Manchester United that no United fan can say this is his job. And Ten Hag is seeing those things. And he refused to make changes. Even the Varan he pulled out was because of maybe injury. So what is difficult there? We are not good for now. In as much as we are not going to play two CDM sitting, we need to play two CDM. One can be a little bit off run, like what Casimiro does when he plays with Mino. You don't need to play with a two CDM that creates a very big gap. Because the gap between McTominay and Mino is enough to pack two Ferrari. We are, we are, we are rubbish. This is not a match as I a good football fan wants to watch. Because it's a shame 
that will come into this season and you are watching this man you are Chelsea. That you, you, you are at Stamford Bridge, you play a team that has won four games, you, you go one man down, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, they score two goals, you go one penalty goal, you draw two two. United then, brothers, two two there, one one there. Brothers. So, 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 directly or indirectly, we are creating chance for Tottenham. Okay, let me, let me, Tottenham has been there for some time. We are not creating a chance for Aston Villa to make top four at the expense of United and Chelsea. That is how stupid we have been. So stupid. You can't even be consistent. How do you explain winning Liverpool? Then come back and draw Brentford. This is one game you should revenge because by this, when we went there last season, 45 minutes, we are 4-0 down. So if you're a pragmatic manager who believes in what football brings, you go to Brentford home today, you teach them lessons of their life. We have some injury returns. It was a plus to us. We have no reason drawing this game. At the same time, so long as the game is concerned by statistics and everything, we deserve no point. But before going into this game, we deserve to win this game very clean based on what happened there. Because when we played there last season, after the night set minutes, people were asking, was is, is Ten Hag the man for the job? There were questions. But after that game, we turned things around by winning Liverpool 2-1. Things begin to take shape. But what's our problem? Consistency. We don't have a player with 10 league goals. Chelsea have a 13 league goal player, he's 11th. You can't even defend well. I guess a Brentford that has been wasteful for 90 good minutes. They gave you nine extra time for you to win a game. You are the bigger team. Make good changes. The two centre backs that started the game left, another new centre back comes in. Then what did you do to the midfield? What did you do? What was your team talking about? You get the goal. What did you tell your players? Because this thing is not new. We've seen it over and over again. I told you, sir, I told you that this is our pattern. We score a goal before we celebrate the goal, we concede. That has been us. But you can amend it. When Bissaka lost the ball, instead of him to run, he was throwing. He kept him onside. He kept Anthony onside. Uh, Tony onside. He kept him onside. He was the reason why Tony was onside. So if you're a serious manager player playing under a serious manager, having a fear factor, because under Pep, he can't throw. Under your club, he can score. Under a man like Anshu Postecoglou, he can score. But he's in a match inside the Manchester United where he nearly his feet, he plays. Everybody has his position. So there is no threat, there is no respect, there is no fear. It's a big shame. Big shame, man. Uh, do, do, do we talk about Hoyland again? Because, I mean, low number of touches again. And um, I don't know, the team was poor all around. And people like Bruno Fernandes, Ganacho Rashford too, the people behind him. I mean, all of them, uh, worse than him even. You wanted Hoyland. You got him. Yeah. Let's assume there wasn't, you didn't get maybe your first choice striker, but you got Hoyland. He's 20 years, you knew. Yeah. He had seven goals, like, nine goals last season. You bought him to be your out and out striker. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. If he's crap, if he's not playing well, I blame you. Because there is no way a striker in number nine, playing a team with Bruno Fernandes, Rashford and Ganacho, should be coming in deep. Digging deep like a legendary um, hurricane to pick balls. You are not, he is not picking the ball. He is committing so many fouls. He is not touching the ball in the balls. He has no time in the ball. He spends zero time in the balls. So how do you get the ball? Your position is zero. So you are the manager. What do you do? Because people, I don't know what people think about managers. You come into a club to manage players, not the club. You manage the best out of a player. Raheem Sterling was so wasteful until he met Pep. Pep brought at least, at least a little bit best from him. He started finishing well. So you are the manager. Can you tell your striker, this is your position. Stick here. Play less of the ball. Go for less of the ball. Stay here. Patiently wait for the ball. That's what, Harry, uh, uh, that's what Eli Haaland does. Whether you there is ball or not, stay there. Wait for the ball. It will come. Then tell your two wingers and your number 10, please, there is no need shooting from a 18 when you have a striker pass to him. They are neither passing to him. He's neither positioning well. Because most of the time we see McTominay getting the goals. So how do you blame United for not playing for him when you see McTominay getting the goals? So he's not positioning. He's not concentrating. So he's poor. You can't play 22 games and you have 7 goals and 2 assists. You are 20, of course, yes, we know. But we've seen people. 20 is not, you're not young. As 18, you are, at, you are at, least at the age of love. So at 20, you should start doing things. So I blame him. He should play for himself. Be a little bit selfish as a striker. 
That's what makes you a striker. You can be playing for the team that is not playing for you. They are not giving you the ball. Stick to your position. Let the whole world see that you are being isolated. The manager talks about it. But when you keep running around, trying to do a hold up play you cannot play, do, you commit fouls. It's your fault, bro. <sighs> and then let's move. I mean, uh, so many performers on the Brentford side, yeah, but if you are to pick a man of the match all around, who would it be? The man of the match is the man that caused the equalizing goal. If I, um, um, if I, Anthony is the man of the match. Tony is the man. From the first half to the last whistle, he is the man of the match. He came for an audition. If we have money by summer, if Anthony is an option for Manchester United, he's an option for Arsenal, he's an option for Chelsea. Yeah. So whatever you see him doing, there is an intention behind it. Is he good? Fine. Is he pretending? No. Where he's coming from, by now he should be depressed. But he's not depressed. He's not missing anything. He picked up from where he stopped before the ban. So he's the ban to go for. He is the man of the match from the key. Even if they stopped him from the first half, he will still win the man of the match. Because today, I think the game was against him. He had so many chances. He played very well. He had so many link-up play. He made some runs. He even passed some balls. Like, like the game was against them, but the only good thing that happened that they ended up grabbing the point because I think people won that game. To me, it was it would have been unfair. We deserve not to win. Even the one part, we don't deserve it. So, if, uh, Anthony, Tony happens to be the best man in the game, and there's no argument about it. Your final thought? Do I even have a final thought? <laughs> On a weekend, West Ham lost against Newcastle. Those men are behind you. In front of you, Tottenham won their game. As of Villa won convincingly. You are chasing top four. The only thing you need to do is win when they are winning. You got, keep the pressure on them. When they lose, you win. When they win, you win. That's the only way to go. So when the two teams are ahead of you, win their games, and you end up drawing your game, you throw away two points, and you go to you discuss top four. You are just wasting your time because you can't get top four. As we speak, United cannot make top four because I don't see Tottenham stepping. They can't drop. Tottenham can If there is a team to drop among these three teams competing for the fourth position, it should be United because we are not playing. There is no football we play. We play smash and grab. It's no longer working. They sit back. They even allow their goalkeeper to take their set piece. They knew very well that we don't have the confidence, we don't have the competence to even hit them on counter. So you can imagine when the goalkeeper take all the whole set piece in 90 minutes. A team that has Rashford, Garajo, Hoyland, Bruno Fernandes, and your opponent allows the goalkeeper to even take free kick inside your boss. No, half, no. Inside our half, yes, yeah, sorry. I think Tim Hag is becoming a little bit tactically poor. There's no argument about it. We can't save him from all this. Because if he has been doing well, he can't finish the last season. Today he's sixth. And I'm, I'm with you. you blame him, you blame the players, then you blame the Glazer <laughs> for their poor useless recruitment. That's right. It's official! Yes, our FFT match is now available for you to purchase from anywhere you are. All you need to do is land on our page and then when you land on our page, just scroll here to any of our videos, click on the video and after the video loads up under the comment section, our shop. So just click on any of the products in that shop and it will take you to the website. Now, when you land on the website, I beg no panic. If you see this error message, just click on the three lines within the top left of the page. Once you click on those three lines, click on either the men's shirt, if you want the men's shirt, the hoodie, or the female wear. So just click on any one. All the merchandise, they are available in so many colors, sizes, and any other thing. And if you're the US or UK, if you receive that same day where you order. If you're a chief, you have a discount code that will be given to all chiefs on the platform. And thank you so much as you drip in FFT colors and in FFT royal wears. Thanks for watching. Right here, another one of our video ways to post like and all our social media links. I mean, follow us on every platform because we get content for everybody.